everyone and welcome to this video. Now today I'm going to be doing an album review. I'm going to take a look at this record here. So it's um, Highway Companion by um, Tom Petty. So I'll just be doing my usual thing in this video, giving a bit of background information about the album, then showing you my vinyl copy of it here, and then looking at each of the album songs in detail. So this video, I must confess, I actually meant to make um, about, a, about a month ago. Um, like I had it all, like all like notes I've written up, but for some reason I never filmed it. Um, and then I was just like looking on my laptop and I found this folder and I was like, I don't think I made that video, um, like, and it turned out that I didn't, like, so yeah, I finally get around to it because the motivation behind doing this review was uh, Richard McCook's um, Tom Petty album ranking, where which is a really great video, a really interesting list, like, as well, like, um, I think that like, for most um, sort of, like, Tom Petty fans, like, it's always, like, the same, um, like, three or four albums which we tend to put up, like, at like, the top, but Richard had some very interesting picks, and I remember him having this one particularly high, um, like, on, um, like, his list and um, so yeah I thought um, like I thought that I would revisit the album because it wasn't one of his which I was um, like too um, like familiar with so this was Tom Petty's third solo album, but his 14th overall when you consider the albums um, like he's done, like as Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. So it was released on the 25th of July in 2006. So the album sees Tom Petty reunited with Jeff Lynne, who had produced arguably Tom Petty's most successful work, um, like in um, like the late 80s and early 90s, the albums uh, Full Moon Fever and Into the Great Wide Open. Um, and Jeff Lynne, kind of on those out albums had a very particular kind of like production style like he always he like he had a sound like what like he was known for like and like was great at um like but for this record here it's a very different kind of um sound on this it's a lot more uh, subtle production um a lot of more kind of stripped back and i feel has a lot more of kind of tom petty's own like identity like on it like as well i guess if you didn't know this was produced by jeff lynn it would be almost impossible um like to sort of like tell and i think in terms of its music and its sound like it's more akin to something like wow and um, to something like wildflowers and um, compared to emlyn's um, and um, like other productions and yeah like as i said this was his third um like solo album released just as um, like tom petty so his other two were full moon fever and wildflowers um which was like wow like which was produced by um like rick rubin but both of those records could essentially be kind of heartbreakers albums because they've got pretty much um pretty much every member like from Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers on those in some guys like or on other whereas this one is probably his most genuinely solo album because the only musicians on here are Tom himself who is credited with um, like vocals guitars and drums on here like he plays like all like the drum parts which is quite interesting you've got Jeff Lynne who plays bass and then there's also a couple of appearances from um, like Mike Campbell like as always but I think he's only on a couple like off tracks so that means that this album has a lot more kind of like off like a homespun feel to it than like many other um tom petty albums another really interesting fact about this was at the time he had announced this album has as his kind of retirement album as his kind of this was going to be like his last release or like he was going to or, or like a lag or like certainly stop touring and um, like there was like a kind of um like if like a kind of contemporary review and kind of interview like from like the guardian like it's like anything to go by um however um that wasn't to be like he would continue to tour right up until um like his sad death um like around 10 years um after the release of this album. And he'd also said that the album title, Highway Companion, um, kind of was reflective of the fact that he thought it was suited to a kind of like a solo road trip, or like it's kind of like, yeah, like literally your Highway Companion, um, and says that the album kind of um, touches on themes of it's quite a reflective album, and kind of touches on themes like off like the passage of time. So in terms of its commercial performance, this was a hit album like in um, like America, where it reached number four, um, partly helped by a very extensive of US tour, however it only reached number 56 here in the UK. So I wish I'd show you my vinyl copy over here, now this is from the Tom Petty box set which I've got hiding up there somewhere, um, like yeah, like which covers like his um, like later day albums, which I, which, which, which was a godsend like, as a box set because because originals of these go for big money and like, like, and, like yeah, so it's just great to get them all like in one place. So here's the cover, I, I do quite like this cover, I think it's a very um, bold like a distinctive cover. Back of it there just as the track list um, and this is on a double vinyl although it's one of these doubles where 
it probably really shouldn't be a double. It's like, but it, it's like, it's like um, three songs like on each side. So it's very, um, like, yeah, it's not, it's not a true double album, but a lovely gatefold there though. Really, really nice artwork there. Um, and the records themselves just look like this. They're in these um, nice sort of uh, protective sleeves there. So there's um, one record. The other one um, looks like so with a slightly different coloured label, which is quite nice. Um, and then you also got a lyric insert as well, which has a few nice pictures of Tom on it there. And then you've got the um, the lyrics and then a wee photo there of um, Tom, Jeff Lynn, and a few other folk, uh, Mike Campbell, who are like, involved um, like with um, the making of the album. Okay, so I'll now go over each of the album songs in detail. I will score each track out of 10, and then use those scores to give us a overall percentage marking for the album. And it's hard to say. So it kicks off with the song there, Saving Grace, which is a really solid track to kick off the album. Very kind of bluesy kind of riff and a very kind of, yeah, like a shuffly kind of feel to it. I, I do like the development the song goes on here. It kind of builds up slowly with kind of different instruments like I did, like as like it goes on. Um, and I think it's, I think it really works like as an album opener. I think it really draws you in. It, as I'm not, I'm not going to say it's one of my all-time favourite Tom Petty tracks, but it's a very good opener and I would give it a 9 out of 10. Square one, my slate is clear. Next one up is a square one. Now this is a um, a little bit off a change of tone, a very nice or delicate acoustic number, but very hooky though, very catchy this one, that, that kind of chorus, that square one, my slate is clear. Rest your head on me, my dear. It took a world of trouble, it took a word of um, it, it took a world of tears, it took a long time to get back here. That verse the vibe like that chorus is just really catchy, and I think he sings it very tenderly. Um just about yeah, trying to sort of reset your life, I guess, like after like maybe like a bad experience just a very charming song and i think works well like as a second track and um, like on the album Next up is there called a Flirting With Time. Now this is a very kind of retro kind of 60s sort of sounding track. It's only a very birdsy this one. But I could almost imagine it. To, to me it sounds a bit more like Teenage Fan Club. Like you know like their kind of version like off like a kind of um, like, sort of like 60s jangle pop sort of song. I mean it's very catchy this one. Good mid-tempo feel. Quite reflective lyrics about kind of um, like yeah like sort of getting the passage of time. But also perhaps maybe um, passing I guess something or some, something onto like kind of like the next like generation perhaps he sings like I've done all I can do and now it's up to you I mean it kind of keeps up like the momentum like all the album quite well it's not a massively standout track though it's it's just a bit um I guess genetic sounding um but but it's good though and I think it works um like and like I think it, and I think it works like this early on like on the album so yeah for me flirting with time and um, we'll get an eight out of ten so if I come your door. Let okay, next up is a uh, down south. Now this one is a really, really, really good song. Um, I, th I think it's the best track like on the album for me. A very charming song about kind of returning to like his hometown and kind of. I guess it's a sequel like in like many ways to like the Southern Accent song. So great lines about kind of finding the heroes like of his childhood and looking up former mentors and that. Um, now Richard McCook's um, like when like um, like when like I think we were doing our top ten um, Tom Petty songs. Um, like he mentioned that this song is a lift from a Bob Dylan track and um, Love Minus Zero. And I did have to look up that song and I can definitely hear like the similarities like between um both this and love minus zero both in like the arrangement but also like the melody but no matter i think this is still a brilliant brilliant track um, and yeah one of my favorites like on the album you say what you want to jack i'm gonna get my baby back Next up is a called Jack. Now this is a really fun, very infectious, catchy song. This one here, but also quite low key, like as well. I like his kind of the way he sings. This he's almost like whispering it, and, and I think it just like, and I think that like chorus line, like um, like where it goes, like you say what you want to Jack, I'm gonna get my baby back. He just sings it really well, and and I like the kind of contrast between that kind of subdued kind of chorus, but then this um, sort of like instrumental break where you get this kind of sort of loud strumming like acoustic guitar, and it's a bit more like in like your face. I think that kind of contrast works really well. So yeah, for me, Jack, um, a, a really good track there for me, um, would get a 9 out of 10. Turn this car around. 
Launching off another really good track is uh, called Turn This Card Around, which is a very, uh, again, it's not the kind of like mid tempo track, very kind of chilled out vocal, and I guess um, for the most part a relatively simple like arrangement, but then the song just goes into like a different gear when you get this awesome like instrumental break where he kind of um, like he sings like this line like I'm going back and he just really belts it out, and then you've got these more intense guitars and drums come in. I guess this is the one point on the album where album or that or lag or like one of um the points where you can kind of um with um jeff lynn like on like this one here like he kind of it kind of um has it, it feels a bit more produced than some of like the other tracks um like but um like apparently this was originally intended as the album opener i don't think it would have worked like as the opener i think it works quite well like at this point like on the album and um yeah all all around just another really solid track so yeah turn this card around would get a nine out of ten I need a big weekend. Next up is a big weekend, which is another very solid song, kind of a sort of feel good lyric. This sort of about kind of yeah, basically just wanting to have like a big weekend away, sort of and get away from like kind of like the daily grind, like of life. Musically very upbeat, very catchy, in a very similar vein to I guess something like You're So Bad from like the Full Moon Fever album. So all around, oh, another very solid Tom Petty song again. It's not one of my absolute favourites, but I think it works. And well, like on the album. Okay, so we're now kind of at the kind of just past the halfway point, like on the album, and this is, I guess, where it kind of starts to go. I don't just quite say downhill, but it starts to get a bit monotonous and a little bit like samey, I would say. So the next track is um, Night Driver, which for me is possibly the weakest like on the album. I think, I mean, it's pleasant enough when it's on, but it just is very forgettable, this one. A weak melody, so it just doesn't stick with you, and there's just nothing very distinctive about it. I mean, it's, again, as I said, it's nice when it's on, but filler, really, for me there. So yeah, Night Driver would get a 6 out of 10. Damaged by love. And then the album does pick up though for me with the track of Damaged by Love, which is another ballad, um, but it's a bit more distinctive this one. And um, I think this is the other track where Jeff Lynne kind of makes his mark a little bit. It's got a kind of Roy Orbison-esque um, sort of feel to it, particularly like in like the drums, like on like the chorus, which kind of hark back to that kind of like you got it kind of sound, um, like sort of like Jeff Lynne like did like with like Roy Orbison. Uh, very nice sort of touching lyrics like he sings like she's got nothing to hide she hides it so well and um, keeps broken dreams to fix up and sell and it's just, just a very nice song this i think petty sings it well and i think it's just that kind of um combination of like lag of like the production and a really nice song i think make this one of the album standouts so yeah damaged by love um would get a nine out of ten this old town is a sad affair Okay, so we're now on to the last side of the album, which starts off with a song called This Old, this old Town. This is a very Neil Young style chat, you know, a very Harvest era, like Neil Young, very kind of that kind of, um, that sort of like kind of um, very steady kind of country rock sort of feel to it. Um, good lyrics on this one and, and, and relatively catchy and memorable. Like he sings, like, this old town is a sad affair. You'll be glad that you're not there. It ties your hand. It spikes your drink. He, he kind of sings. Very um, good lyrics, I think. Musically very calm and laid back. Pleasing when it's on. Um, again, a little bit like a treading water track, but is one which I guess I could see myself returning to and possibly growing on me like even more. So yeah, this whole town for now we'll get a seven out of ten. Ankle deep in love. Okay, the penultimate track is uh, called Ankle Deep. Now this is a another good solid kind of mid-tempo acoustic bass song very kind of southern like americana lyrics on this one here like he sings like they raised that horse to be a jumper was owned by a midwest bible thumper his preacher was a louisiana drummer so slightly nonsensical and kind of lyrics but i guess it kind of had, I, I guess it kind of had potential you know to kind of go in this kind of very kind of um 
sort of um, light-hearted, sort of fun, sort of like narrative track, but then it just doesn't really go anywhere beyond that. He kind of sets up this kind of narrative, but then he just doesn't really use it to um, like, sort of like too well, and, and that kind of like the ankle deep in love kind of chorus just feels a bit lazy, feels a bit like a poor payoff, like on like the song really. So again, I would give it a six out of ten because it's not bad, you know. And like I wouldn't necessarily skip it like when it's on the album, but it's just at the point of the record where, um, yeah, I think it could have maybe done with something a little bit different. Well, the golden rose with a broken... Okay, and then the album closes with another, again, slightly sleepy track called The Golden Rose, which is a slow, sort of stately ballad. Um, a song, I think, lyrically is about a ship. He sort of sings around, like, the golden rose sailed with a broken man going south. He sort of sings on it. So it's quite nice, um, but again... It doesn't really stand out, doesn't really leave you with a kind of, wow, that was a great album sort of feeling to it. I mean, it's got a semi-interesting arrangement. You've got Mike Campbell playing some vibraphone on it, which is um, different. Um, but it's, yeah, it's not one of my favourite Tom Petty tracks. I think it kind of just ends the album on like on like a slightly sleepy note there for me. Okay, so overall this album would score 80%, so I think this is a really good, really solid and um, quite reliable kind of Tom Petty album here. It's got a more kind of earthy feel to it compared to some of his other albums, particularly his other albums produced by Jeff Lynne. This one just feels very chilled out, very homespun. Um, and yeah, it's just an all round a nice album. I would say it could have done with a little bit of editing and trimming, you know. It is only 12 tracks, but it, I guess maybe it being a double album, uh, album and like you needed to get up like four times like, while like you're kind of like listening to it. it, it it does feel it does feel like a little bit longer than that, and I think as well it's not helped by the fact that towards the end a couple of the songs do start to feel like a little bit um, like samey like on it, um, and I think maybe and I, I, I'm not quite sure whether better sequencing could have saved the record. Like I don't quite know. Like, but I think it just yeah it maybe starts to get a bit monotonous like, after a while. But when this album is good, I think this is. Um, yeah, some of Petty's best work, to be honest, or certainly best later day work. Um, so, yeah, tracks like Saving Grey, Saving Grey, Square One, um, Down South, of course, Jack, I think are all really, really great songs. And I think this album should be um, like recognised like a lot more and, yeah, should get a lot more attention than it does. So yeah, that's me come to the end of my review of uh, Tom Petty's Highway Companion. So I hope you have enjoyed and I will see you all next time for the next video. Goodbye. Stood on the shore